Hey folks, welcome back to Todd Bosley's world famous YouTube channel. Tonight we're going to be talking with a professional precious metals expert. His name is Tony DeNegris. He is based out of North Carolina. He knows his metals and he's going to tell you tonight why it's time to buy silver. I'm Todd Bosley. I'm from Ohio Trading Coin and Jewelry. Here is my information. We buy and sell bullion daily. I've laid out a nice selection of some of the different things that we have. Believe me, this is just part of what we have. Uh, the show tonight, though, is about Tony. Tony, thanks for taking the time to uh, share with my viewers your opinions, knowledge. Tony, I've known him. I've known him for a very long time. He is extremely knowledgeable. He has a lot of good ways to look at things, and he's going to explain to you why, at least tonight, silver is the direction that most of you should be thinking. So with that introduction, Tony, I'm going to turn the show over to you. Okay, Todd, I appreciate it. And, uh, well, thanks for the uh, compliment. I don't know that I deserve all that, but uh, you're a good guy, and uh, thank you much. But we will talk about silver, and you know I'm hot on it. Always been. Me too. And I think it's time is coming. So uh, we're going to pursue... Uh, do's and the don'ts of uh, precious metals in general and why we think silver or uh, and i know you agree with me uh i like silver more than any other metal at this point in time i think it's ready to rock give us a little bit of the history of silver and why why you think silver is ready to pop well silver is not just a jewelry metal it's not just a uh uh, silverware, you know, spoons, forks, and uh, your kitchen utensils. It's not just that, although it could be uh, 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 a, a nice set if you want to buy a set that costs a fortune today. But uh, silver is used in just about every aspect of our lifestyle today, more so than ever. But it's been around for thousands of years, predates the time of Christ. They use it in the Roman times and coins and uh, and and they made utensils back then out of it too as well. But uh, silver today is an industrial metal. It's a medical metal. It's in technology. Just about every every aspect of uh, your daily life, you could point out that there's silver here and there in it. Even biological. Um, so I'm really uh, I'm really. Uh, of the opinion that silver is at a point where um, now is the time to buy because it's ready for a move. Now everything has its time. It goes up, it goes down. That's part of life. There's nothing guaranteed in life, but we got to be astute enough to recognize when opportunity is knocking. And I think it's knocking right now. Tell us some of the new opportunities that, that exist for silver. Well, and as far as uh, products, you mean, or as far as uh, where it's used? Well, I think in technology, I, I know technology is a big thing. I know that medical is a big thing. Um, kind of, kind of, maybe give us a little history about that and where things are headed. Okay. Well, uh, silver today is used uh, in in batteries for these uh, these newer electrical cars that they're making. Oh yeah. Uh, and and it's uh, it's the greatest conductor of all the metals. It's even it's even uh, conducts electricity better than gold. Uh, cell phones have it. Um, photography uses it. Uh, medical technology uses it. You couldn't have an uh, X-ray without silver. It yeah. has a biological function where it, uh, it in. Um, in nanotechnology, they use it to actually treat uh, biological organisms that are uh, of a lesser uh, grade, uh, a low level, low level biological uh, issues that are, that are treatable uh, in the human condition. And uh, silver, uh, silver has that biological property where it actually uh, it destroys uh, low level organisms. So they use it in medical in a lot of ways as well as the industrial part of medical and the machinery and so forth that they make for it. Um, but it, it's a fantastic product. Um, we can't get along without it. And, and as time progresses uh, with what's going on with the, the push for uh, a greener uh, technology, 
um, and you know, oil is secondary uh, in, as far as how they predict where we're going to be in the future. Uh, everything's going to go electric. This opens up all kinds of opportunity. Solar panels, all of that stuff. Let's talk about the the shortage or supply issue that exists with silver today. Well, today we're looking at silver as being uh, a part of the industrial complex. Uh, And you have a lot of precious metals to choose from. So uh, the reason I like it more so than any other metal, even more so than gold, is because uh, if one is an investor and has been looking at this market over a long period of time, you would know that when silver starts to move, as well as when gold starts to move, they will move in tandem. But silver always outpaces gold on the way up. And uh, I remember a time when gold was going up uh, 1% in a day and and silver was going up 5%. There were people actually selling their gold and buying silver and making a better return on their investment. But anyways, that's what happened in the past. I'm not saying that's going to happen in the future, but silver has always been traditionally a better play for your money. It's a great opportunity, and it's affordable, and that's what I like about it. It is a very affordable way to to, to invest in uh, precious metals and protect yourself against basically what they're talking about. Inflation, just like gold, is a hedge. It has all kinds of opportunities knocking here on the door. What I like about silver is that, you know, most experts agree it costs about $35 an ounce to get it out of the ground. And right now it's trading somewhere in the 20, high, low 20s, low 23, 24 range um, as of uh, January 23rd of 2023. Um, but when you look at the massive amount of silver that's going to be needed in the future, you, you had talked about environmental issues. Biden's Green Deal that he made. Uh, that requires a lot of silver for solar panels. Uh, when you look at the electric car, I, I can tell you I'm in Ohio. In Youngstown, they just built a million square foot plant that's going to make batteries for electric cars. And you can't make an electric battery without what's in my hand right now. That's silver. Uh, they predict right. that they could use between 150 and 300 million tons of silver in 2023. I don't know if those numbers will hit, but... If they're even anywhere close to that, I don't understand how silver could stay at $23 or $24 an ounce. It definitely has to go higher. I think a lot of the problem with silver has been Wall Street, actually. I think there are um, this, if you go and you look at these EFTs, which are exchange traded funds, you'll see that they have, they have these ways that you can buy silver and they don't own maybe they maybe own 10 percent of the silver that they're selling so 90 percent of the paper silver doesn't even really exist i know there's a lot of silver in in the world i'm not trying to argue that agreed but i agree there's a huge production issue because when i try to order silver from the the largest manufacturers in our country or other anywhere in the world you're still looking at a two to four week delay for most pieces Now, occasionally stuff will come up. Right now, I'm showing a Royal Canadian Mint, which I just love, by the way. Uh, This is a one and a half ounce. And uh, you got to give it to the Royal Canadian Mint because, man, they know what they're doing up there. Our coins in the U.S. are kind of boring compared to these. Although, we're getting better. Um, But, Tony, I know that you and I had talked earlier about the 2022 Eagle shortage. Uh, give us a little history on that, and give at least give me your opinion of what you think about that. Yeah, sure. In fact, uh, let me comment though on the maple leaf. I really love that coin. It's actually pretty beautiful. Uh, just uh, they have them in larger denominations, also, right? They have the small one ounce rounds, and you can go up to five ounces. Yeah. I don't know if they make them any bigger than that, but the five ounce one is gorgeous to look at. Just a big gorgeous. You can actually frame it and just say, "Look at that! How beautiful that thing is." Yeah. Uh, but getting back to the, uh, the the shortage, 
Um, the United States Mint had a, had a law in production last year. So some people view that as a, uh, uh, a diminishing uh, uh, demand, but it turns out that that wasn't the case. They simply could not produce enough of the silver and their numbers went down not because demand went down demand has always been strong and uh anybody who has tried to buy silver uh in quantities last year knows that you had to get on a waiting list with most dealers and um the reason for that was because the united states mint simply could not obtain the blanks they buy one ounce for everything they, they produce, they buy blanks. So, uh, and they, they buy blanks from silver producers, uh, the bullion producers. And, uh, some of them are in foreign countries. So, uh, they simply could not get enough of the blanks that they would put in the, in the dye to produce the designs. And, uh, that's why the production ran low. Now they're thinking about, uh, producing their own blanks because they're getting tired of waiting around to have to bid up, bid up on them and buy them from uh, uh, um, basically other countries to get them in here. So um, that's the reason why we had the shortage uh, last year. But it's also uh, uh, difficult for them to get it out of the ground in the quantities that it's, uh, that it's desired uh, right now. The demand is simply strong. And uh, you have to recognize this kind of thing when you to, to see it what the prospects are for what's going to develop down the road. If you see the shortage now, it's not going to get, it's, if, if it's, if it's tight now, it's going to be tight later. It's going to be tighter later because being tight now, it draws in more demand and that just keeps multiplying upon them itself. So again, that's just another reason why as an investor, also a, a buyer and, you know, and seller of, of precious metals, I look at these things and, uh, and it, it's another thing that convinces me what's going on here. And that's still why I'm hot on silver. Where do you think silver can go in the next uh, five years? And why is silver the right buy for uh, different people of economic status? Like, let's talk about the guy that has $10 million versus the guy that has $10,000. Well, a lot of the working guys that I see and I talk to on a daily basis, uh, they want to get into something where they can secure uh, for the future, possibly uh, a quantity that they can not buy in one big bulk lump sum. They, they have to work for a paycheck every week. They bring home, they got to pay the bills, they got to bring food on the table, whatever. They have a few bucks left over. Better than going to the casino. Uh, uh, yeah. A lot of them go to the casino because everybody's hurting right now, and that's why the casinos are all doing well. They just love to take your money. Everybody goes there, they're basically desperate. And uh, it's a fun thing to do, there's no doubt about it, but you can't look at that as being as a way to make money. Although people go there in hopes that they can get lucky, but the way to play this is with the with a, if you're if you have a limited budget and you can afford a little bit, maybe twenty five dollars a week or fifty dollars a month, uh, uh, start by buying small quantities from a trusted dealer. And I, in, a, in, a, in a moment, I want to talk about what that means because uh, there's a lot of dealers that you can't trust. But, and if you have, uh, if you're making a, a decent paycheck, maybe, maybe you're partially, uh, you're in the middle income bracket in this country and you can afford a little more. There's no reason not to have silver. And I'm talking about physical silver, not the paper silver, like we were talking before. Mm -hmm. And I do want to touch on that in a moment, but, uh, there's nothing better than having physical silver locked up in your safe where you can say, Hey, I know what I got there. And I can count on that being the real McCoy when the time comes when I need it. And uh, it's easily sellable, and you can turn it around on a dime. And uh, if you buy it from the right dealer, then you have assurance that, you, that you're in good shape. I agree with that. Um, flea markets and uh, <laughs> online, good luck, man. I'll tell you, I own a coin shop in Ohio. Um, and we do we do more. I would say we're more of a bullion dealer than we are a coin dealer. Although the coin business, you know, it, it's up and down, but lately it's been up. 
the amount of people that come into my office and bring in fake stuff is alarming. I mean, it it's alarming how much of that is going on. And when I say, where did you get it? A flea market or online? And they either answer flea market or online. Rarely do they ever say, I bought it from a dealer down the road. I, I've ne- As a matter of fact, I've never seen that. But flea markets and online are the two biggest scams that I see going in precious metals. I agree. I agree. Um, there was a point that um, a big online uh, retailer, we're not going to mention names here, but everybody knows uh, who, who it is. Uh, and you can buy and, buy and sell stuff on there all the time. They sell everything. But they had a big, uh, uh, big uh, problem years ago. I don't even know what they've done to correct it because if you're talking about things. eBay, they haven't done uh, much. <laughs> if it's uh, eBay, and I think that's what you're talking about, I still have people come in that buy fake silver on eBay all the time. We have a tester in our shop, so when you buy something from me, we can put it right on the tester, and it shows you the exact purity of what it is. And most of the people that come in, they buy it on eBay, and it's fake. And if you're over 30 days, you can't return it. So anyways, I didn't mean to cut you off, but eBay is a real sore subject with me. Well, okay, so you mentioned that I was holding back, but you threw it in the, in the kitty here. So, uh, uh, yeah, the story goes that, uh, uh, and, 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 and as well as that particular uh, company, people go to these auctions around local areas. That they're all over the country, and I've seen it myself. Uh, a lot of uh, young people, middle-aged people, old-timers, they're uh, some, but they'll be selling some coins, uh, some gold coins, some silver coins, some silver dollars, and uh, uh, they buy them and they bid on them and they pay higher prices basically than anywhere I've ever seen. These auction places are crazy. Uh, the, the, the bidding competition, what it what it does, but um, these people have been socking away this stuff in their in their closets or in their safes or in their drawers, wherever they keep their things they want to store for the future and i read one time a number of years ago I and mean, this was a well-known fact amongst um, knowledgeable investors that at some point in time a lot of these people that have been accumulating uh bunches and hoarding silver and gold that they bought in these venues are going to be in for a rude awakening and uh, they're going to go to sell at some point when they need the money when prices go up and they think they've got now is the time to cash in, and they're going to be they're going to find out that oh my god, I got taken, and and that's just how it is. So uh, it's important to be a, uh, to buy from a reputable dealer, and I and that's why I like what you're what you're doing in your operation, Todd. I know that you present a fair deal to everybody, and whether somebody comes in with something to sell you or whether you buy it they can rest assured that you're gonna you're gonna tell them what they have and what they're getting either way yeah i agree with you you know one of the frustrating things for me i'll get into my story at some point down the road but um this all started out as a hobby for me that i i liked a lot um but after some events in my life i decided it was time for me to really like take this on because I was looking for something that I really enjoyed in life and silver and gold, precious metals in general, uh, coins, U.S. and foreign are very interesting to me. But I have to tell you that the thing that just makes my heart ache when, is when, and it's not even the person that bought it. That's the, that's the worst part about it. I will see children of people who have accumulated what they think is a hoard or wealth of precious metals. And a lot of times it comes in and it's the Littleton Coin Company or it's the State Quarters or uh, we could get into a whole bunch of names. I, I particularly have a real problem with the Littleton Coin Company based on what I see because a lot of times they sell you things that are not what they should be or what they're presented as. Even like late night TV, that's that's a whole nother thing too. If you're buying that stuff late night, They'll say it's 24 karat, you know, uh, 10 mils or 100 mils. They all have a little different scam to them. But 
All it is is uh, brass or copper that's plated with uh, silver or gold that you couldn't recover if you wanted to. And so this, I'm on the front line, so I see it more than what the average person sees. And I'll see people who come in and, you know, they'll say, Dad said this is worth, you know, $20,000. And honestly, I can't even make them an offer on it because I'd be lucky to sell some of the stuff for for a dollar or five dollars and it's disheartening so I guess what what my point of these videos is if you're gonna buy silver let's buy silver and I've been showing here for the last 20 minutes what real silver looks like um, you can put it on a test or it'll test it'll it's the real thing and that's what I want to see people buy because silver in my opinion is gonna go way up now you could buy it today and tomorrow it could go down it could drop ten dollars. It could go up ten dollars. I don't know. I'm not making any any professional forecast. And Tony, I know that you're not either. But what I do hear you saying is that there's a bigger demand for silver now than there ever has been because of the industrial and medical uses that it has. One thing that people don't know about silver necessarily is that it's used a lot in wound care. And people are like, what is wound care? Well, people that have diabetes, they understand like when they get open sores and things like that that don't heal, silver is what you use to heal those wounds with because it has a composition that kills germs. Uh, sometimes, I mean, you should take silver and just rub it all over your hands. That, that's what you ought to do. I'm going to take a piece of silver and show. Just like this, like you should just rub it on your hands. Um, that's what that's what really kills germs now does it kill all the germs i don't know but if you when you look at why is why is silverware made out of uh silver sterling silver is 92 and a half percent silver and there was a reason for that because it killed germs so the things that you were eating off of didn't have germs on them that's what the cowboys used to eat off of was sterling silver silverware um, and there was a reason that they did that. And then that's, that's one of the reasons why. So I just, I love silver and Tony, I, I love the stories that you have to tell. I know that you know a lot and I know that you're heavily invested in silver and you think that it's going to go up. Uh, let's go back to the question though, that I don't think we answered. And that is the guy that has 10 million and the guy that has 10,000. What's the right amount of money of your, of, if you have, Ten thousand dollars. How much of that would you, as a professional, feel comfortable telling someone to put into silver? Okay, I'm glad you asked. And you, I remembered um, as we got carried away a little bit in some sidetracking yeah. <laughs> here and there. It's hard to cover every every aspect of uh, what we'd like to, like uh, our viewers to see or think about. Uh, but you're right. Uh, I did not touch on the uh, various components of. Uh, how much one should invest based on what your uh, investment dollars uh, that you put aside uh, are going to be. If somebody has $10,000, they ought to look at a percentage uh, of that money. I'm not saying take $10,000 that, that you have put aside and throw it all into silver. I'm not saying I agree that. with that. Because they should not. Things do go up and things do go down, but... Um, in, in, in a practical way of investing, I think with a, a guy who has 10000 or a family that's put away some money, silver can be, can be sold, just like I mentioned before, instantly. You can sell silver all over the place. There's dealers everywhere. You can bring it. Oh, you got silver, bang, they'll buy it right then and there. Yeah. And silver always has a premium on it. So many times you can sell silver for actually more than what, what the actual market is, depending yes. on what, what you have and um, what kind of silver you have, whether it's a coin or a silver dollar or a round or ingots, what have you. But um, I don't think it's uh, a far call to be practical and say that a person with $10,000 to invest should feel uncomfortable putting half of that into silver. You have to look at what's going on in this world today, and that's got to be the, the, the door opener for you. You got to look at that, my door. That door is opening for me. I got to walk through it. Now, a guy that has a million dollars or whatever, 
he's going to have investments in condominiums and well, all kinds of things scattered everywhere. And he's probably going to uh, be a 15% guy in precious metals, maybe uh, 5% in gold, 10% in silver, and maybe platinum. And he's doing a little bit of this and that. That's called diversifying. But um, I'm of the opinion uh, that silver is the way to go, and there's nothing that's going to change my mind. I see, I see the handwriting on the wall, and I believe that that's that's the way to do it to, to for the future. I think, as far as the guy that has ten thousand dollars, what he really has to weigh out is, you know, what are his future expenses, and is you know, is there is there going to be enough money for an emergency and uh, silver is nice in the fact that it, it is it is basically a commodity. It's something you can trade for U.S. dollars or whatever your monetary exchange in, is in the country. We have viewers all over the world that watch this channel, so we can't just use the U.S. in general. But I would say, for me, um, a couple things. Silver is something that I can count on being worth something. Now... Will it necessarily be worth what I paid for it? I don't know that for sure. It could be worth more or it could be worth less. So as far as a planning aspect of it goes, you have to know your needs, your family, and what your commitments and liabilities are before you put any money into anything, whether it's silver or the stock market. And I hope you're not getting in the stock market right now because that's probably not a great idea. But... If you had $10,000 that was clean and you, you just said, this is what I'm saving, I'm not doing anything with this money, then I think half of that money in silver is a great bet. But remember, everything is a bet because you just don't know. Um, but I do think that silver is a great play moving forward. I think silver, as long as you have a five-year outlook on it, uh, it's going to be hard to lose money on it, but you never know. I mean, that, that definitely could happen. I think we're in for a run on silver soon. I think that uh, the market, the silver market is definitely manipulated. There's no doubt about it. The big players, the big banks, they, they play games with silver. But as as the average man begins to collect this and consume it, there's not going to be as much uh, to play with. And the paper silver is going to have to have a day of reckoning. That's going to happen. And when that happens, that's when silver could just go right through the roof. Because there, the price of silver, in my opinion, is way too low. And everybody gets into the comparison between gold and silver and what the ratio should be. The ratio right now is, is really skewed. And silver should be much higher. It should be much closer to gold than in gold. Actually, if you didn't have the paper silver, then the paper gold, gold would definitely be higher than what it is right now, than, than 2,000 an ounce. Well, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly, but I, I'd like to point out something that I think your viewers uh, might, might, be, uh, might find interesting. And it has to do with uh, gold versus silver. Uh, and this is just a clue that you really got to take a look at. And, and, one, and, and say to yourself, I wonder why this is happening. All right, now, <clears throat> we're supposed to be small investors, all right, because we're not, we're not big institutional uh, worldwide banks or anything like that. But we want to compete with them because, uh, you know, we want to make money uh, as well as uh, uh, anybody else. And we, a small guy wants to make money just as much as a big guy wants to make money. Let's put it that way. But if you look at gold and silver itself and look at what the central banks all over the world are doing, all right, that, that, that's a biggest clue. And I've said this to you in our conversations in the past. All the central banks, all right, most of them deal in gold, not silver. They buy gold and they hold it. Now, the central banks are basically the big banks, the big, big banks for each country that, that handle and um, – a country's currency like in, in our in our system it's the fed the federal reserve banks all right there are banks in every country that based basically do the same thing all right they handle the currency and they distribute the currencies throughout smaller banks for, for that particular country 
everything goes through monetary policy is determined and flows through through the central banks of each country what are they doing and this is all over the world they're stocking up on gold gold goes down because of the daily fluctuation of investments um and, and manipulation that takes place in the market it, they play it in all kinds of directions stock investors versus uh versus commodity investors versus uh uh, bond investors, there's all kinds of money flows back and forth through these financial instruments. And when you see something go, going down, you can't look at that and say, oh, gold's going down and I'm going to get out of it because it's all manipulation. When gold goes down, all you see is the central banks all over the world stocking up and buying more and putting it into their coffers. And, and if you look at it and you say gold goes up, and silver should go up with it. Well, if they're stocking up on gold, I want to be stocking up on silver. Yeah, agreed. And that's the clue I'm offering to your viewers here. That's a great point, Tony. Well, this video is getting a little bit long, but thank you for all of your time and your wisdom. I have appreciated your friendship and your knowledge over the years, and I, I really believe that silver's on its way up. Um, I will take one last opportunity here. To let you know that if you want to buy or sell silver or gold, uh, I'm your guy. Give me a call. I ship all over the United States. We even ship outside of the United States in certain situations. Um, my cell phone number is 330-323-9775 right here. You can call or text. Let me know what you're looking for or let me know what you have to sell. Um, you know, we say buy silver now, but, you know, there are older people who are ready to sell silver now as it goes up. And uh, we're ready to help you with that. Tony, thank you very much for everything tonight. And folks, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out all of my other videos. We have a lot of great gold and silver and coin videos in our collection. And uh, more to come. Hit that subscribe button. Like our video. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.